Have you ever wondered what might happen when you mix silicone with cement? At first glance, this combination may seem pointless, even strange or incompatible, but the truth is that it holds surprising potential. In this video, you'll learn a simple yet powerful formula that many people overlook, and that can be extremely useful in many everyday situations, especially when it comes to quick, strong, and durable home repairs. Let's start with the main ingredient, silicone. Have a tube of silicone handy, preferably the neutral type, which is more versatile. If possible, also use a manual silicone applicator, the one with a trigger that allows you to precisely control the flow. After that, begin extracting the silicone, directing it into a container. Here I'm using a regular cup, but I highly recommend using a metal container, like an aluminum or brass pot, because it needs to withstand the next ingredient in the mixture, the solvent. The solvent is essential for altering the texture of the silicone, making it more malleable and easier to mix. You can use thinner or another type of silicone-compatible solvent. Add an amount proportional to your needs to the container. If you're making a small application, don't overdo it. Please share your thoughts and comment on where you're watching from, your city or country. It's always amazing to see where this content is reaching, to meet the people who are part of this community, and of course, this helps me produce content that's increasingly aligned with you, wherever you are in the world. You'll need three nylon cable ties, also known as cat ties, and a thin wooden or metal stick. Attach the cable ties to the end of the stick so that they're spaced apart, like the blades of a propeller. This small, improvised device will function as a mixer, attached to the tip of a standard drill. With the whisk ready, place it inside the container. Now, simply operate the tool carefully, keeping the speed low at first. You'll notice that as the whisk rotates, the silicone begins to dissolve and transform into a more homogeneous gel. This process may take a few minutes, but it's essential to ensure the quality of the mixture. Always remember safety. Wear safety glasses to avoid splashing into your eyes. Now comes the final ingredient in the formula, cement, which gives the mixture its rigidity, firmness, and strength once applied. Use regular cement, the kind used in construction, renovations, and minor structural repairs. Gradually add a few heaping spoonfuls directly to the silicone and solvent mixture, being careful not to overmix. Using a spatula or spoon, stir slowly and steadily to thoroughly incorporate the powder into the liquid base. Gradually, the mixture will gain body, density, firmness, and a more uniform and moldable consistency. Continue adding cement gradually, patiently, and carefully, until the mixture reaches a creamy, thick, homogeneous, and slightly sticky texture, similar to a strong, high-strength glue that adheres firmly to a variety of surfaces. This is the ideal point for application, ensuring a durable, strong, and visually uniform result after complete drying. Now that the compound is ready, let's put it to work. Choose a damaged area of the house. In this example, we'll apply it to a crack in the concrete floor. The first step is to prepare the surface. Remove any dust, loose debris, or dirt. If possible, lightly dampen the area with a little water. This helps improve the adhesion of the compound. Once everything is clean, grab a putty knife. If you have a flexible silicone one, even better, as it allows for a smoother, more professional finish. Apply the putty directly to the crack, pressing lightly so it penetrates the crevices. Then, smooth the surface to make it even. The end result is impressive. The mixture hardens over time, becoming highly resistant to water, temperature fluctuations, and natural wear. It can be used not only for cracks in concrete floors, but also for wall cracks, holes in roofs, tile joints, and even as an emergency sealant for concrete slabs. Furthermore, this homemade putty has an incredible advantage. Its initial flexibility allows it to fill gaps more effectively, while its gradual hardening ensures long-lasting durability. If you liked this tip and want to continue learning practical, simple, and smart solutions like this, don't forget to watch the next video on the channel. It will feature an even more impressive, useful, and surprising technique that can completely transform the way you solve simple problems around the house, using few materials, low costs, and plenty of creativity. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Share it with anyone who might be interested and get to work putting it all into practice. Have you ever wondered what happens when we mix two completely different products that, in theory, should never be combined? On one side, 
liquid silicone glue used in crafts, repairs, and small fixes. On the other, ethanol, known for its ability to dissolve, clean, and evaporate easily. But what if I told you that, together, they can create something completely new? A mixture with properties no one expected. Something that transforms simple glue into a durable and surprising metallic paint. After mixing the liquid silicone glue with the ethanol, simply stir continuously until the glue dissolves completely. Gradually, the liquid will become thinner and more homogeneous, with a light and uniform texture, ready to receive the metallic pigment. I divide the mixture into two parts. In one, the experiment will continue untouched. In the other, a new ingredient will enter the scene, the metallic powder pigment in bronze. I pour in two grams of this metallic powder. The fine particles shine brightly under the light, reflecting golden and reddish hues. Now it's time to stir. And here's the secret. To get a truly uniform paint, you need to stir for at least three to five minutes without rushing until any lumps or traces of dry powder are eliminated. Now the most anticipated moment has arrived, applying the metallic homemade paint. Right here in front of me is a piece of metal marked by time with obvious signs of rust and wear. It is on this piece that this mixture will prove its effectiveness. Using a soft brush, I begin by applying the first coat, a thin layer, just enough to cover the surface and allow the product to penetrate the metal's irregularities. The paint's texture is slightly thick, but it spreads evenly, creating a subtle and elegant metallic sheen. After 10 minutes, I return to apply the second coat. Now the coverage becomes denser and the metallic effect comes to life. The bronze tone intensifies, and the metal seems to be reborn before our eyes. This mixture of silicone glue and ethanol has exceptional adhesion. Even on rusty surfaces, it adheres firmly, forming a continuous, durable layer. Total drying time is approximately 8 hours, enough time to ensure the silicone is completely cured and forms a long-lasting, protective coating. Remember how I divided the mixture into two parts at the beginning? In the first, I used the bronze metallic pigment. Now it's time for the second part, and this time with a new color, silver. I pour approximately two grams of the silver metallic powder into the container with the silicone glue and ethanol base. Soon the shine begins to emerge, shimmering in the light. Using a stirring rod, I stir carefully for three to five minutes, ensuring there are no lumps or dust left at the bottom. Now it's time to reveal the new test. This time the surface is quite different from metal. It's a glass jar, completely transparent, smooth, and challenging. Using a thin brush, I begin applying the first coat of homemade silver paint. I use gentle strokes, leaving only a light, even layer. Even with the first application, you can already see how the paint spreads easily and adheres firmly to the glass surface. Then I wait 10 minutes for the initial drying time, enough time for the ethanol to evaporate and the silicone to begin to set. Next, I apply a second coat, reinforcing the coverage and intensifying the metallic shine. The glass, which was previously transparent, now has a mirror-like silver finish, reflecting the light with an almost chrome effect. Finally, I let the pan rest for at least 8 hours, ensuring the paint fully cures and forms a strong, durable film. After eight hours of complete curing, the paint is completely dry and adhered to the surface. But there's still an optional and highly recommended step for those who want a more professional finish, applying varnish. Here, I use a spray varnish, keeping a distance of approximately six inches from the piece. I apply light, even coats, without excess, just enough to create a protective film and enhance the metallic shine. 
I repeat the process on both surfaces, both metal and glass, ensuring the same level of resistance and luminosity. The result is immediately visible, the shine intensifies, the texture becomes firmer, and the finish acquires a reflective and sophisticated appearance, worthy of an industrial paint. And so we conclude the entire process, from preparation to application, showing in a technical and accessible way how to make homemade metallic paint using only simple and readily available materials, liquid silicone glue, ethanol, and powdered metallic pigment. The cost is low, but the durability and visual results surpass many commercial paints, a simple yet ingenious mixture that transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. If you enjoyed this content, please share it with your friends and family. It really helps bring this kind of knowledge to more people. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next experiment.